All right, so we'll get on with the repair or the attempted repair in just a minute here. This is about just a situation. What would you do? And how I think. You got this three wall heat pump. Got this three wall heat pump here. And it's low on Freon, almost out of Freon. And you find the leak, it's in the condenser coil. Do you, this is a perfect opportunity to tell somebody that um, R22 is in short supply, very expensive, can't even get it anymore. Um, totally skip explaining that there are alternatives that can be used in R22's place. And definitely don't tell them that you might be able to fix the leak. So we fix, I mean, I can't even count thousand of these leaks. Evaporator coils, condenser coils, not too proud to work. Um, always give people options. Uh, the advice that you give to a homeowner might be different than the advice that you give to a corporation. Um, but you still got to give them both their options. Uh, you know, we work for homeowners, regular old folks, and most of the people that we work for mom and pop shops, and, but most of the people we work for are heavy hitters. So anything that's over a certain dollar amount, um, it doesn't matter how much they like us, how long they've been using us, how many buddies we have that work at the local branch, that job's going out to bid, two or three other contractors are gonna come here. And these systems regularly get replaced. Uh, on the first floor, I've seen bids for about 11,000 bucks, but anything that's up here is usually uh, 13 or $14,000. And then there is the question of the lift rental. Uh, out here in the parking lot, I can get a lift to get up to the, the second or third floor for just under a couple thousand bucks. If I got to go around to the other side of the building where it's grass, I'm going to need an all-terrain lift that might cost me closer to three. So if you're only doing one unit, bang, you're looking at 15 grand. It is what it is. And, and I see the proposals after the fact, after the job's done. Um, I know that our price and what we offered was uh, competitive and lower than everybody else. So definitely no question about the honest intent. But um, we often see that nobody offers to try to fix these. And I mean, are you good at what you do or not? Do you always have to have a safe bet? Does it have to be a grand slam every time? Do you take a chance ever? So yeah, a lot of companies are not going to bid this repair. It's, it's, it's not that it can't be done. I think it's probably because they don't have faith in all of their technicians. And if they got to come back and do this again, it just doesn't look good. But out of thousands of these repairs, um, probably only had about six or seven come back as ones that are leaking again somewhere. And I don't think that's a bad odd. But um, so let's take a look at this one right here. This is one of those ones that is a revisit. One year ago, found the leak in the condenser coil. Not right here, <laughs> not over here, down behind the compressor. So uh, as crazy as it sounds, uh, I can fix those leaks. But I can't get through the compressor, so we actually took this compressor out, fixed the leak back there, and it hasn't been a problem for over a year. In fact, it's still not leaking in that spot. But now it's it's leaking down in here. Okay? And honestly, I can fix that one too. But I'm not just here to work and take money. 
I like to feel like I'm making progress with what I'm doing. I don't just offer wing and a pair, wing and a prayer uh, solutions. These are tried and true, and if I'm wrong, I'm doing it on my own dime. I don't have to do that very often. So that tells me something about what I can do. And what you can do too, with proper intent and training. Hang in there, Jack. But look, every time one of these goes bad, you're going to have three other people coming in here and giving prices. And you're going to have to decide which kind of contractor you want to be. Do you want to hit a grand slam or go back to the bench and wait for the next time at bat? Or do you want to hit base hits and doubles all day long, all week long? So here's what we're going to do with this coil here. Changing an evaporator coil, 3000 bucks, we're done, all good. Might have to wait a week to get the coil, which is why sometimes we fix those leaks. And if it's still good two years later, you didn't make a bad decision. Uh, this condenser coil is made to come in this way. The fan's got to come out. The fan housing's got to come out. The compressor's got to come out. The control box has got to come out. The reversing valve, all associated piping, and accumulator has got to come out of here. <laughs> Let's go see what we're going to try to do today. A little too close to my face. All right, come on. Got to point you down for a second. Be outside for a little bit, but you'll hear some banging. Yes, ma'am. You don't have to run when you're working for somebody else, but when you're working for yourself and you got a lot to do, you, you make that decision. So, we're going to try to pull it out this way. It'll come. And we're going to cheat a little bit. When they build these places, sometimes they give them one or two spare units. And uh, so we were already creative. Took the liquid line off, made a cut over here that should be pretty close to where I made the cut on the inside. Expansion valve already on there in place. So that'll be brand new. And the uh, defrost temperature sensor. That's there. All you would have to do though, if you were just gonna order only the coil, is uh, put all that stuff back together. So yeah, you'd probably wanna get the old valve off and switch it over out here, or you're gonna pull that compressor out. And if you're gonna do that, you may as well just do the coil from the inside. But um, that's a lot of work and it's still worth doing. So uh, that's what we're gonna do today. So, get back to customer up and tell them 13 grand, see you in a week. You can have three or four other people come in here and give them the same numbers. Maybe you get the job, maybe you don't. Um, but if you can fix a leak in a few hours and make four figures, and the first number is not a one, what? Let everybody call you stupid. Let everybody tell you you did the wrong thing. It's working years later, right? The customer's happy, right? You gave them an option both ways. They can't say that you lied to them. Nobody's going to come in here and make you look like a thief. These are heavy hitters. These, are, uh, these bids are getting looked at offices up the chain from here and states away with people that don't even know the management here. These numbers are being looked at and compared. So all we're doing different is saying, yes, we can fix that. 
or yes, we'll try. Okay, but on this one right here, we did that a year ago, a little over a year ago, and that leak is fine. Sometimes coils just get to where they're too degraded, and you know that they're going to start just popping leaks everywhere. At that point, if I fix that leak up there, I kind of know in my mind I'll be back before the end of the summer making another couple thousand bucks. Nah. I like to sleep better than that. Mm -hmm. We'll earn this money today. They say it's a grand slams. Who's the yours? But if you want to keep customers for a really, really long time, they remember things like this. Choice is yours.